Guys, watch this. I got this. I am gonna hit it on the first try. <laughs> you missed. It's all, it's all because of the wind. <laughs> sure, the wind. <laughs> well, let me give that another shot. <laughs> Something always gets in Tig's way. A foundling. Fellas! Huh? Look at what I found. It was there in the sand. Oh, an egg. I wonder who it belongs to. And, oh, I wonder who's going to pop out of it. Or, or what's going to pop out of it. For something to pop out of it, one of us will have to sit on it first. So, Tig, go ahead. Ha! <laughs> sit down. Uh, why do I have to do it? Because you, my friend, are the most fluffy and the most pillowy. I'm curious. Do you think it could be a duck? <gasps> Maybe a stork. I heard that snakes also hatch from eggs. Ow! What in the... The snake bit me! Relax, will ya? It's just a little turtle. Oh, look how cute it is. <gasps> He's so precious. <laughs> Tig can't tell a baby turtle from a snake. <laughs> oh, come on, Leo. I was just kidding a bit. <laughs> Scared you, didn't I? <gasps> Ooh, a meal! <gasps> Hey, guys! Look over here! Our little turtle glued his fingers together. Maybe he's a little weird? I got it! That must be why the other turtles ditched him. Oh, poor baby. We'll take really good care of you. Isn't that right, boys? Of course we will. Know what? I'm going to make a true tiger out of him. Why, a tiger, huh? He could become a great leopard. Ooh, I will call you a little baby T. Uh. Remember, baby T, tiger is the tiger's king. Ha, <laughs> we got a king. Don't interrupt, Leo. T. Do you know why everyone is afraid of tigers? Because they are really, really super fierce. Rawr! Make sense? Well, now you try. Come on, louder, like this. Rawr! Enough! Now it's my turn. Bear in mind, Baby T, that an ambush is the best way to overcome an enemy. We leopards are experts at this. Rawr! <laughs> well, that's not quite like a leopard, <laughs> but it's a good start. And use that little precious angel in the bathtub, huh? <laughs> it's you, my little cutie patootie. Okay, Baby T, your mission right now is to catch this dragonfly. And we tigers call this thing hunting. Now go! <laughs> All right, Tig, I think it's my turn to train little T now. No way! Because he's still not a real tiger yet. But he won't be. 
Because Baby T will grow up to become the bravest leopard. Tiger, leopard, guys, does it really even matter? He's just a baby. Oh, guys, guys, wh wh where is T? Yoo-hoo, little guy. Hello, T, where are you? Baby T, come out, say something. We're here. Nope, we'll never find him like this. We gotta split up. Tig, you go left. And Mila, you go right. I'll go straight ahead. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Baby T! <laughs> Where are you? Oh, Mila. Where are you going in such a hurry? Mm. Oh, Mappa Pandiga. Hello, sir. We can't find our little baby T anywhere. Where's little T? What do you mean? Baby T. You know, the little turtle. He has these special sort of little feet, as if they're glued together. Nope. I haven't seen him. Also, what would a turtle with glued feet, as you say, be doing in the forest? Turtles live elsewhere. No way. But where? Well, let me tell you. A long while ago, all turtles used to live ashore. But one fateful day, spring came about and brought along high waters. One of the islands on the river became completely covered in water. Then the oldest and wisest turtle turned to the river and asked it to have pity on them and teach her children and grandchildren how to swim. The river was deeply moved by her plea and gave all turtles webbed feet. But they still lay their eggs ashore, so that before going into water, the little ones could get a chance to know where they came from, land, their first home. It is a memory they will cherish for the rest of their lives. And when a baby turtle comes into the world, it is guided to the water by the soul of that very wise turtle. So that means that T is a water dweller. Yoo-hoo! T! Where are you? Say something! Ugh, there's no sign of him. Guys, guys, listen up! It turns out that T is a water dweller. What? A water dweller? If that's true, then that must mean he... Yes! He's at the river! <gasps> but guys, the vulture! <laughs> My lunch order's here, with an extra crispy tortilla shell. <laughs> oh. Hey, you! Back off our little baby T. Could you say that again? Didn't catch that. Keep your filthy beak off baby T. <laughs> I'm so honored to have guests for dinner. <gasps> <laughs> Look at 
It's her! It's the wise turtle! Goodbye. Swim, T. This is your family. And, well, I wanted to say, you were one awesome tiger. And a brave leopard. T, don't forget to ride! Far away, in the infinitely vast expanses of the sky, high above the tallest mountains and the prettiest clouds, way up high is where the red deer lives. Sometimes he ventures down to the ground. The patter of his hooves makes the sound of thunder while the gleaming of his silver antlers makes the lightning. Being always hungry, he tramples down everything in his path, devouring entire trees as if they were grass blades. Nobody is safe from him. So if you see the red deer, <laughs> so there, that is how the story goes, kids. The Red Deer. You see? We're building a house dam, obviously. Stay out of our way. And two, three! Whoa, look at that! It's a bridge! I've never been on the other side of the river before. <laughs> More reason, then, to check it out. Do you mind if we cross here, Mr. Beaver? Sure, go ahead. Just be careful. No, we can't do that. My mom says... No, she doesn't. You're just afraid. Stop making excuses. Tig, come on. Afraid? Me? I'm not afraid of anything. Hey, don't just stand there. Get back to work. Ugh. Oh, wow. Look at that giant tree. I've never seen anything so huge. Ah, oh, the great cedar, the father of the forest. Looks like a regular old tree. Let's go. <gasps> what if it doesn't want us to go any farther? <gasps> yeah, right. You make it sound as if the tree is magical or something. You don't know. What if it is magical? <laughs> Bunch of chickens. Me? Let's go. Told you. No 
nothing to be afraid of. Nothing at all. Uh-huh. Sure. <laughs> it was just a bunch of birds. Hey, what's wrong? That's what the magical tree tried to warn us about. He tramples down everything in his path, devouring entire trees. So if you see the red deer... long. I hope they didn't get lost. Oh, no. Oh, look! Look! Over there! There's someone running! <laughs> Marty! Oh, that's my Marty! Mommy! I'm here! The trees are gonna burn down. Come on, come on, come on. And two, and three, yeah. And again. The red deer, it's too close. Oh, we're not gonna make it. Jump on the log, quick. Marty. Uh -oh. Leo, do we really have to go in the water? Take again, really? <laughs> It's just that it's a little too wet. Tig, paddle on! Uh, uh, Tig, 
I guess we pulled it off. We did, huh? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we did it! We stopped the Red Deer! Kids, are you all right? I was looking for you everywhere. The Red Deer is not to be trifled with. Mappa Pandiga, we are fine. You should have seen us take down the Red Deer. And we saved the forest. Meow. <laughs> hey, look, now there's four leopards among us. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I'm a leopard. Okay, five. Off with the feathered ones. Shorty! Go see what all the buzz is about. You stop your chittering right away! We can't get no sleep! Shoot! Shoot! Pipe down, you hear me? Uh, who's flopping their trap this early in the morning? We they did, did it. it! Quiet! Stop yapping! Hey, you! Seems to me like it's you who's yapping here. And the birds are singing. No one can sing this nice in the whole forest. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. Shoe feather freaks get moving. Your person's here with disapproving. Messing with my sleep, who? Well, I say shoe. Sing now, birdie, sing a song. Sing a love that sing along. Forest dwellers need to hear just how lovely you can sing. Shoe feathered one shoe. This is our forest, not yours. You disturb our sleep, so once again, shoo! Birdies, don't you be afraid. Just get comfy in your nest. We've been waiting for so long just to listen to your song. This is our forest, ours only. Feathered ones need to go! Songs of joy, spring is here. We love singing, can't you sing? Sing and whistle to a dance. You'll bring spring into our land. Forest flowers <laughs> need to hear just how lovely you can sing. This is our forest, not yours! You disturb our sleep, so shoo now! This forest is not all yours, so stop being so bossy! Leave our feathered neighbors alone! Well, how about this, huh? And this! What are you doing? Stop it right now! <laughs> I'm the boss around here, you all got that? Is that right? Well, you're not the boss of me! Yeah? <laughs> we run this forest. You all got that? I don't think so. Uh -uh. Come on, you all got nothing on us. <laughs> Take this, you striped wool sack. What? I'm going to show you. <laughs> Wait, I have no time for you right now. Leo, check your six. Watch out. Oh, 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 now you know who's the boss around here. Not you. You just wait and see. Everyone, get back to the base. It's time to draw up our battle plan. Yara, you wait over here. Mila, you run over here and draw them into a trap. Ah! <laughs> Those? No! No, they can't be! My, my mom told me... Where did they come from? That they, that they sucked the blood out of everyone! Oh, no! How terrible! What do we do? Let's run to Mappa. He must know. Pandiga! 
Stickers! Ah. These are squeaky mosquitoes! Oh, wait. Grab the pine branches! Ah. Get to the cave! Fast! So now are we going to have to stay in here forever? Why forever? In winter, the squeaky mosquitoes go to sleep. Mapa Pandiga, what sort of squeakers are these anyway? And what are these mosquitoes? Good oh boy. My great-grandfather told this story to my grandfather. One day, the spirit of the tiger's own brother, Amba, was visiting him. But Amba was so evil that the animals of the tiger didn't want anything to do with him. It made Amba very angry, so he made up his mind to punish the animals. He summoned swarms of mosquitoes, squeaky mosquitoes, for animals had nowhere to hide. They went to complain to the kind spirit of the tiger. The spirit of the tiger asked Tiger to deal with the mosquitoes. <laughs> tiger couldn't do a thing. The squeaky mosquitoes were too small and too fast. Then the spirit of the tiger sent Leopard to fight them. And then Wolf. But they returned empty handed. Then a little birdie flew to him and said, Can I try? The spirit of the tiger agreed. You can, my friend. The birdie unleashed a mellifluous song, summoning the birds. Answering the boisterous call, the birds filled the sky, their wings flapped with vigor, and their beaks snapped with thunderous might. Not a day passed when the mosquitoes disappeared. The squeaking mosquitoes were gone. I know what we need to do. We gotta get all those birds back to the forest. I just don't know how we're gonna do it. We hurt them really bad. So that explains why there's so many mosquitoes in the taiga. <gasps> okay, what did you guys do to the birds? Well, we first tried to defend them from the martins. We really stuck it to them and made things much worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, come, the spirit of the tiger, come to us. us, spirit of the tiger, and help us. Help us lest the tiger dry up and become a desert. Go on, go on. Oh, the great spirit of the tiger, please help us to bring back the birds to our forest. We'll always treat them well and never harm them. And we will protect them with our lives. And I beg you, the great spirit of the tiger, please, please. I miss hearing them sing so much. We will cherish each one of them. We'll never take them for granted. sense now. The mosquitoes are scared of the birds. They'll 
build your nests. Go on, build them. The best spots are right here, next to our home, our hollow. Here, here, and over here. Sing now, birdie, sing the song. Sing now, love, let's sing along. Forest dwellers need you here. Just how lovely you can sing. Birdies, don't you be afraid. Just get comfy in your nest. We've been waiting for so long. Just to listen to your song. Songs of joy, spring is here. We love singing, can't you see? Sing and whistle, do a dance. You'll bring spring into our land. Forest dwellers need you here. Just how lovely you can sing. Goodbye, Theodore. So have you come up with an interesting question? I spent all night thinking, but I still have nothing. I've got a question, but I forgot it. Hi, Theodore. Do you also want to listen to Mappa? No, oh, no, my friends. I just wanted to say goodbye. To say goodbye? Ah, it's September already. Today at sunset, our flock is flying off to the warmer lands. Over there, at the Blue Hills, is where we meet. Whoa, it's so far. You call this far? The warmer lands, that's really far away. Several days of a strenuous flight through heat and cold. Through winds and storms. All right, children. What questions have you prepared for me? Today, as promised, I will answer the most interesting one. Who's up? So what? No questions. I've got one! Mapa Pandiga, why do storks fly to the warmer lands for the winter? Good one, Leo! <laughs> wonderful. That is an interesting question indeed. A long time ago, back at the dawn of time, the weather was always hot on Earth. But then, the climate began to change, and animals started to dress in furs and feathers. Those who chose feathers learned how to fly and became birds. Later, it turned out that the feathers are not good for keeping you warm in winter. But the birds didn't want to give up their plumage. They wouldn't trade this new and magical feeling of flying for any fur coat, no matter how warm or beautiful. That's why, ever since that time, every year, many birds have to fly far, far away to the warmer lands where they can stay till the harsh winter is over. I'm so glad I've got my fur coat. There's no way I'd be flying to the warmer lands. Oh, so pretty. Where did it come from? That is Theodore's feather. But without it, how can he fly to the warmer lands? We need to return it. Give his feather back. Can we make it? We don't have any other choice. In that case, let's go, guys. Think of something. No, Leo. Just no. Why not? Jump now, Tig. Don't be scared. I'm gonna jump first. Okay. As a gentleman, I'll let you go first. Huh? Ah! <clears throat> oh, wow! Why did I never jump like that before? <laughs> but this is... 
so high. Leo, I can't do this. I'll just wait here. All right, Tig, stay there if you want. But could you catch the vine first? Good job, Tig! Jump now! Get me out of here, Leo! Hold on! Hold on tight! Tig! Tig! I'm coming! He just got caught on a thorn, so he couldn't jump off. That's right. Caught on a thorn. Theodore, you're friends with a tiger, a leopard, and a lynx. I don't believe you. Where could he go? Leo! Yara! I have really bad luck today. First, I got caught in a thorn, and now I fell into this deep pit. I'm so sick of vines. <laughs> you don't have to believe it, but I do. 
have wonderful friends. We made it! <laughs> we found your feather. You lost it, right? Yeah, this is my feather. But why? I think you can't fly without it. Oh, no, Tig. One feather wouldn't affect the way I fly in the slightest. So we came for nothing? No, not at all. I'm so happy, my friends, that you came to say goodbye before I leave. And this feather is for you to remember me. Goodbye! And good luck, Theodore! <laughs> <laughs> when the wind above the sea waves, when the wind above the sea waves, when the wind above the sea waves starts to storm and rage, we will scare it up with shouts. We will scare it up with shouts and continue on our flight. Hey ho, loudy birds! Hey ho, daring birds! Hey ho, loudy birds! Continue on our flight. Hey Tiger Patrol. Know what I was thinking, Leo? Ah, how our dear Tiger is so vast and beautiful. Right you are, Tig. I've been wondering. There must be other countries. Of course there are, kids. Mapa Pandiga, can you tell us something about other countries? Oh, that's very interesting. Just for an example, there's a place where it never ever snows. <laughs> yeah, right. Next thing you know, you'll be telling us that striped deer live there too. <laughs> Do they ever? But there aren't deer. The horses! Listen here now. That land is called Africa. It's full of wondrous animals. A giant with a leg instead of a nose. A toothy lizard the size of a huge log. A beast with a neck so long that it can eat the leaves off the top of a tree. And although they look different, they are similar to us. Just like us, they are friends with each other. And they too love their land. Sometimes they get into trouble. And so, I've heard that for times like that, they have a special team of heroes in Africa. They're called the Guardians. Should any animal need help, they come to the rescue. They are always ready to help. These guardians are known around the world. Wow, it must be great to be a guardian. I wish I were in that, what do you call it, Africa? I would love to be a guardian. Tig, we don't need Africa. Let's make a team of our own, right here, in the taiga. Wow, Leo. That's a really cool idea. Leo and Tig, guardians of the taiga. No, Tig, the guardians is taken. We have to call ourselves something else. Something for the taiga. Well, how about the taiga patrol? Ha! Awesome! The taiga patrol comes to the rescue. Ah, <laughs> I just can't. Spots and stripes down there. <laughs> the Tiger Patrol. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Enough. Just, just go away. No, 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 no. You'll fail anyways. You'll make fools of yourselves. <laughs> That's right, you'll fail. <laughs> Leo, so who are we going to help first, huh? Here you go, Mila. Oh, hi there, boys. Thank you so much. We're not boys, Mila. We're the Taiga Patrol, and you can let everyone know. Come on, Tig. Let's go see if someone else needs our help. Children. We are the Tiger Patrol. 
Look at them, huh? Soon everyone will be talking about these do-gooders. Let's just... let's just throw cones at them, huh? No way. I've got an even better idea. Come on, come on, left! Good! Hello, Beaver Bro! Do you need any help on your Beaver River? Huh? No need, thank you. We can manage just fine. Goodbye. All right, Tiger Patrol. If we're not needed here, let's just go. Near the Tiger Patrol? Well, now that changes everything. Can you put that log over there for me, please. <laughs> just be careful. <laughs> hey! Sound the alarm! Yeah, we've got a leak! Oh, my dear! How unfortunate! <laughs> Get lost, you! Get out! You're away, not a patrol! Uh, so, you're the Tiger Patrol? Sure! Who else? I am so glad that you're here. Some wasps built a nest on our tree. Now we're afraid to go back to our hollow. Help us, please. Ha! Piece of cake! We'll move it for you, no problem! Tiger Patrol now? Nothing better than knowing the whole tiger respects you. Here, here, here. And, and like that. Here. We'll help you, and we'll deliver it right to your burrow. <laughs> we are the Tiger Patrol. Ah! Ah! Help us! Ah! Help us! Ah! What's wrong? Ah! We just want to help you. The beavers and the squirrels. The warned us that the, the patrol is nothing but 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 trouble. No! Uh, help, help! I'm us! confused. Help! Did we even help those squirrels? Tig, I think I know who's behind this. Uh, Spike, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Setting a trap. Spots and stripes will be passing here soon, and I've got a surprise for them. <laughs> Spike! Spike! Quiet! Ha! I really set them up, eh? Now the name Tiger Patrol makes everyone run scared! <laughs> I knew it! You're just up to your old tricks again! And you are going to pay for this, you imposters! Ha! I bet you can't catch us! <laughs> 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 We've got to lead them to the trap. <laughs> hey, Spotty Patrol! <laughs> You're gonna be banished from the tiger for good! That's it! You're gonna get it for good! <laughs> 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 you got caught in your own trap. <laughs> hey, patrol, are you there? Please help us. Pretty please. Oh, please. No way. <laughs> Stay there and think about what you've done. Hey, you can't leave. Don't go. Please come back. Oh, Mappa, nice to see you. We are the Tiger Patrol. <laughs> Heroes. Can you tell us where we can go to help somebody? I don't know, kids. Ah, maybe the spirit of the tiger will tell. He knows this forest well. How can he tell? <laughs> he doesn't even talk. Of course he talks to you. With signs, you just need to learn to see them. Someone out there needs us. Thank you, Mappa Pandiga. Tiger Patrol, to the rescue. Patrol, please, any patrol. Just get us out of here. <sighs> Who needs help here? Oh, I can't see you. We're, We're here. here. Help, help us. us. Quiet 
down, will you? We won't be able to hear if anyone needs help. They are the ones who need saving. Who do? The Martins? But they're the ones who built this trap to capture us. And now we're supposed to just save them? Yeah, we want to do good deeds. And they just hurt everybody. Leaving someone in trouble. Ah, that's not a good deed. No, that's not what heroes huh? should do. Spike, why did you get in the way of Leo and Tig? Because everyone's talking and talking about them. Yes, that they're so kind. Yeah, so nice. We want praise. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. Leo, Tig, why don't you put Spike and his brothers on your patrol? Mm, well, I don't know. Please take us on, and we'll be sure to behave. We, we promise. promise. All right, fine. You can join. <laughs> but only so we can keep an eye on them. Well done, children. All righty then, Tiger Patrol. Let's do it! Good deeds can't just go and do themselves. <laughs> That's what the spirit of the tiger says. An old friend. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, no, eleven, here will be found 12, right away. 13, 14, 15, this won't work either. 16, oh, so where should I hide? 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and I'm done counting. Ready or not, here I come. All right. Leo, here I come! Wow, this is a sweet hiding spot. Tig will have to look for me till nightfall. <laughs> Leo, there you are. Cool. Let's do it again. Totally. <laughs> Leo, where'd you get this nest anyway? From a tree. <laughs> Where else? But what if this nest belongs to somebody? Well, you know, the nest is empty. And if it's empty, it means it's abandoned. <laughs> Yeah, we're coming! Just a second! Tig, let's just put it away now and come back later for more riding. All right. Push it this way. If you don't hurry, I'm gonna leave without you! <sighs> Mila, wait for us! Okay. So today, I'm going to tell you quite an amazing story. Above the sea waves, when the wind above the sea waves, when the wind above the sea waves starts to storm and rage, we will scare it off with shouts. Mama, who's that flying over there? The crows? <laughs> You're a crow, Mila. <laughs> they are eagles. Easy, easy, children. Don't fight. Those are storks. They are coming back to their nests after the winter. Hey ho! Hey ho! Hey ho! We're going home, my friend. <laughs> it's so wonderful to see an old friend when you come back home. And who is that? 
children, I want you to meet Theodore, an old friend of mine, a stork. Mr. Theodore, was it a difficult journey? Well, as they say in the far land of China, the journey to your family nest begins with a single wing stroke. You know what, children? I'm going to tell you the story of the stork. Go, oh, wow. I'd be happy to hear that, too. All right, then. Once upon a time, there lived a stork. Was he all alone? Yes, all alone. All by his lonesome in his giant nest. But then the stork decided to find himself a girlfriend. One day, high in the sky, right under the clouds, he saw a beautiful lady. Only it turned out that this beautiful lady is the daughter of the strongest wind who didn't want to share her with anyone. The wind came down ooh, and pulled the stork's nest apart. But the stork wasn't about to give up. He built a new nest, much stronger than the previous one. And that's when the wind realized that the stork is a worthy fiance for his daughter, persistent and courageous. Ever since that time, storks come back to their nests every year, and the families they build last for their entire lives. Mr. Theodore, do you also have a girlfriend? Well, a stork with a nest has everything. You know what? Come visit me. It's close on the top of that hill. Tig, I have a bad feeling that the nest we found might have an owner after all. Really? And who is he? The nest is gone. What? what do you mean, gone? Completely gone! Maybe the wind blew it away. No wind could do that! It was the sturdiest nest in the entire taiga! Oh, no, no, no. My Theodora's gonna be here any minute. Oh, you haven't seen her angry. That's it, it's all over. Don't you worry, sir. We'll help you. Leo and I will find it in no time. Let's go, Tig. Leo, where's the nest? How should I know? It used to be here. Weird. It couldn't have just disappeared, could it? Stop, do you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome! <laughs> Did you see the shorty fly out? <laughs> come on, come on, come on! Let's go! Let's push it up! Come on! Hurry up! Push! Push! <laughs> come on, let's go! Uh, hey, you! Give us back our nest. Your nest? <laughs> hey, Martins, did you hear that? Oh, yeah. The spotty and the stripey make nests now. <laughs> I can't even believe it. <laughs> it's not yours or ours, but the nest does have an owner. Get it back. <laughs> right, first catch us if you can. <laughs> We're asking nicely. Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> Tig, we're in so much trouble. Oh, no, no, no. Is this all that's left of my nest? No, no, no. Children, you should be ashamed. We didn't throw it down from the tree. They did. That's right. They did. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. Mappa, we were just playing hide and seek and then it fell down. I didn't mean to. And then we just thought that it had no owner. We are very sorry. Yeah. We're very sorry. Please forgive us. Wise men would say that there can only be a wrong path, but never a hopeless situation. But this is the end. The children, children.
Mappa Pendiga, we're gonna fix everything. Oh, listen, guys. I've got an idea. Leo, is this one nest material? For the roof? Sure. And these? Just perfect. Put them there. Okay. Right. Spike, let the spotty and the stripey do the work. That's right. What are we here for? Stop asking and start collecting. All right. A little more. Okay, and one more. Good. Mila, you need to stop. It's already pretty. Tig, call him. Okay. Ooh. It's done. Come and have a look. <laughs> the creeks bring more light, and following spring, I also came back. It's such a surprise. Hmm. Oh, this is so romantic. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> well then. Wanna race? The first one to that bush wins! Come on! Going on the count of three. One, two, three! three. Hey, wait! That's not fair! <laughs> Skin of the sun. Okay, Mom, I'll go now. No, don't be too late. All right, Mom. Hey, you chubster! Can't find a better place to sit. He's a striped wool sack. <laughs> Let him be. Mapa Pandiga is waiting for us. Wow, Tig. Let's go. Let's see who's faster. Huh. Have you learned how to run? Oh, I'm gonna wait for you over there. What's wrong? Oh, it's so high. Tig, come on, what's the problem? Seriously, not again, man. Look, I can leave there and back. Just jump, we're gonna be late. The striped one is afraid of heights again. <laughs> Let's take a roundabout. We'll have plenty of time. Oh, of course. A roundabout. Much faster. We'll be there by night. <laughs> wow, awesome. <laughs> one fat is gonna visit the other. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be late for <laughs> Well, well. Where is it? Okay. Ah, oh, here it is. I found it. All right, kids. When my grandfather was a bear cub, a tiger lived in the giant forest full of trees, beautiful lakes, and formidable peaks. The tiger. He was weak and chicken-hearted, so nobody was afraid of him. Once, a severe drought came. The tiger thought, oh, the sun must be the strongest animal in the world. I wish I'd become this strong. So the tiger decided to lay paws on the skin of the sun. But the skin was guarded by a fierce bear. Mama Pandiga, was he as fierce as you are? No, no. A saber-tooth bear. He resides in his big black cave and protects the way of the stone claw. 
the place where the sun is nesting. So the tiger sneaked past the saber-tooth bear while he was asleep and put on the skin of the sun. The tiger became the most fearless animal in the forest. All the animals and the tiger bowed their heads to him. It was on Equilibrium Day, when night is equal to day. I want to get the skin, too. Tig, I know where the stone claw is. I saw the sun setting down there, and today's the Equilibrium Day. Hurry up! The skin of the sun? Thank, Thank you, you, Mama Pantigo! I have to get this skin! Lil, what do you think? Was it for real? All the things that Pantigo told us about? Sure. You heard it, man. I wish I'd become the bravest tiger in the whole forest. How long do you think we've been running for? Huh? What was that? Hey, Tig, we're gonna get the skin of the sun for you, and you'll become the bravest one on Earth. Tig? Tig, what is it now? You just have to walk on this very huge, very wide log. Come on, come on. That's right. Good job. Don't look down. Just look at me. That's it. Okay. No! Where should we go now? Back home? Up the river? Oh no, we're never gonna make it at this rate. Okay, it's not the way. And here is not the way either. Where is it, huh? Aha! Look over there! What did Mama Pandiga tell us? Come and put your paw on the sun tree in the evening, and the way will be enlightened. Run along towards the sunset! <sighs> Leo, look! <laughs> Whoa! I always knew the stories were true. <laughs> Tig, stop talking. Let's run! <laughs> Whoa! I always knew the stories were true. <laughs> the cave of the saber-toothed bear. We can't go further. Hmm. How can we climb this mountain? Hey guys, over there! <laughs> Gonna set soon. Faster, faster. Run, Tig. We gotta get there before the sun goes down. Leo, I think we'd better go back. Come on, Tig. Forget it. Stupid skin. Maybe it doesn't even exist. No skin? What are you talking about? It must be there. Mappa said to catch the sun before it goes down. So run! Come on, come on, we're almost there. The rock is so close. Oh, wow. Look at this. We're so high. Is this the place? Shh, keep quiet. This is the cave of the saber tooth bear. Whose cave? You mean the saber tooth? Oh, no thanks, I'll pass. Me neither. Look there. The stone claw. Let's go! Leo! 
Careful! Uh, you know what? You better go on your own. Wait there! I'll bring the skin! The skin of the sun! I'll be the mightiest in the whole forest! Come on, go down now! What was that noise? Ah, the spotted one! Hey, you! What do you think you're doing here? The skin is mine! Buzz off while you can! No way! I'm here to get it! And I won't leave without it! What? You won't leave? Well, we're gonna help you! Leo! I'm coming! Too busy running away, I didn't notice any saber-toothed bears. You know, Tig, you don't need no skin. You're the bravest tiger in the world. <laughs> Sounds like a saber-toothed bear. <laughs> Keep cool. That's my mom. That's your mom? Quite a mom you have. <gasps> That must be the saber tooth bear. No, no. That one's my mom. We better get home and fast. Everybody has a skin. But to make it glow like the sun, you need to find your path. The most precious thing. Sleeping? Come out here! Boom! Who's sleeping? I've been up for a while. Well, are you ready for the competition? For the competition? Well, yeah, I'm ready, I think. In that case, <laughs> I'll race in there! Hey, what? That's not fair! You have to say, on your mark, and ready, set, go! Wow! <laughs> I beat you! Leo, that's not fair, because, uh, you've got longer legs. Oh, come on, Tig. <laughs> Legs have nothing to do with it. You just have to train more often. I have been training. Uh, like last week, uh, twice. Quiet, you two. Enough, kids. You shouldn't argue unless you want the same thing to happen to you as what happened to the kingfisher and the owl. What, what happened, happened to them? Once upon a time, when the great cedar was just a teeny tiny little seed, there were two birds living in the forest, two good friends, the white-throated kingfisher and the owl. The two were inseparable, doing everything together and always helping each other out. But then one day, the kingfisher saw his reflection and became arrogant. He started to boast, just look at my wonderful feathers. I'm so handsome and colorful, and you are nothing but gray. That hurt the owl's feelings. 
So he flew away into the wild woods. What? Into the wild woods? As in, as in the wild woods are not for play? It's better if you stay away? Exactly, that's the one. Left without his friend, the Kingfisher grew sad. And so, he decided to find the owl and apologize for the things he said. The Kingfisher flew to the grizzled waterfall and asked him earnestly, Please, help me. Show me how to find my friend. The waterfall agreed to help the Kingfisher, but only in exchange for his bright and colorful plumage. The Kingfisher broke into tears. This is the most valuable thing I have. Nevertheless, he gave away his brightly colored feathers and got his friend back. And suddenly, he realized that he got it wrong. The most valuable thing was actually... Leo! Teague! I've been looking for you! Hurry up! The competition's about to start! Everybody's waiting for you! Oh, Mappa Pandiga, how are you? The competition? Wow, that's right! Tig, we completely forgot about uh -huh. it! Let's go! Let the competition begin right now! Yeah! <laughs> the competitors will run along the forest trail around the giant hill and come back to this spot. Our racers are Tig, Cuba, Mila, and our three-time favorite winner, Leo! Yeah! Yeah! Is everyone ready? On your mark, and get set, go! If it weren't for your shortcut, I would have won. Or you wouldn't have won. Ah, uh, calm down. It's just a race. Not fair. You don't get it. You've won many times, and I never win. So what if I win this time? Oh, Leo, what was that? Help! Somebody help me! <laughs> I think it's coming from there. From, from the, the wild woods! Help me! Somebody! Save me! <laughs> help me! Please! I'm scared! <laughs> please! You gotta help me! Hold on! Please, please. We're coming! Help! Please help me! Please! Please! I'll get him! Please! Take him! Hurry up! Please! Uh, Leo! Please! Stop I can't me. go any further! Uh, uh, I need to take a break! No time for a break! Come on, champion! Let's go! But I'm not a champion! You're the Tink. winner! Now is not the time. We need to save that poor bunny! I can't, Leo! 
Fine. I'll run after him, and you go get his help! Find him no matter what. Why am I wearing this thing? It's wrong. Leo was the real winner. I lied to you. Oh, wow. Look, it's just like in the story. Come on, guys, this way. Follow me. <laughs> I want my mom. Don't be scared. My friend Tig, he's going to come and bring help. We'll get out of here. Wow! Look! A rainbow! A rainbow? Unbelievable! Leo! Beautiful rainbow! Leo! Tig is so Tig, great. we're down here at the bottom! Amazing! That's Tig. He made it! That's great! Yay! Leo! I found you! I told everyone the truth, that you're the real winner. I'm sorry. Aw, oh, Tig, forget about that. It's all good. Get us out of here already. Climb up now, but be careful. Leo! Tig! High five! <laughs> So, whose wreath is it? Leo's! No, this is Tig's wreath. <laughs> well, Tig, first one to the old cedar is the winner. <laughs> Just a second. I'm gonna... <laughs> Train harder! <laughs> All right, I'm definitely getting there first. <laughs> you better go run. ahead. I'll be waiting for you. A gift from the spirit of the tiger. Chubby boar came for lunch himself. Stop right there. Okay, this way. And okay, now this way. <laughs> I found him! <laughs> very, very good job. Did you see it? Cuba spent like half an hour sniffing around and I'm like, bam, bam, and found it. I've got an awesome nose. <laughs> well done, Tig. So, Mapa Pandiga, where did the sense of smell even come from? Oh, that's an ancient story, children. Once upon a time, Animals didn't have any sense of smell at all. Oh, <gasps> that's incredible. Listen to the story. In those ancient times, animals were relying only on their eyes and ears. But one day, a harsh winter came to the taiga. 
The weather was freezing cold like never before, and a thick blanket of snow covered the earth. It became very hard for animals to find food, and they began starving. And it seemed like the winter would last forever. The spirit of the tiger felt sorry for its children, and so it gave them the sense of smell to find food even under the thickest layer of snow. <gasps> to every single one? Sure. And the keenest sense of smell was given to fierce predators, the wolves. That's why you need to be more careful. There are rumors that a red wolf came to our woods. Oh, dear me. That means no more woods for me. Mappa, let's go look for flowers. It's my turn now. <laughs> sure, Mila. Tig, where's Cuba? Cuba? Probably still looking around for his flower. <laughs> the spirit of Taiga didn't do a good job on his nose. <laughs> No, Tig. He's not in the bushes. What if he went to the woods? The red wolf is there. Nah, he must be around here. Tig, we have to find him. Cuba! Hello? Cuba! Where are you? Tig, stop screaming like that. We don't want the red wolf to hear us. Leo, how do we find him? By his tracks? Can you see them? No, Tig. We'll find Cuba by the smell, like you found flowers. Oh, that's right. I'm gonna pick up his trail at once. <laughs> Leo, listen. What does Cuba smell like? Seriously? Like acorns, of course. Here, smell this one. Well... Wait, don't distract me. I think... I think, uh... Ah, got it! Do you smell it? That's definitely Cuba's aroma. Let's find him! Apparently he went off the trail. But why would he go into the woods? Ugh. It's all because of you, Tig. If it weren't for you, Cuba wouldn't go anywhere. What did I do now? Weren't you making fun of him, Tig? Cuba! You've been searching for half an hour! <laughs> Maybe you forgot your nose at home. <laughs> oh, I know! You exchanged your nose for acorns! I didn't know that he'd take it so personally. Tig, it's not okay to laugh at friends. Do you like it when Martins make fun of you? <laughs> For being afraid of heights so much? Okay, okay, I get it now. Stop! Where's the smell? It disappeared. <gasps> I don't like this at all, Leo. So who is he hiding from? Leo, I sense another smell. Calm down, Tig. He's not even real. Cuba, come on. Go away, go away. Let's go. We have to save Cuba. Right, if he hasn't gotten eaten already. What a surprise. A kitten dessert. Leo, do you think this one's real? Ah! Ah, 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 ah. He said we're dessert. Must have eaten Cuba already. Oh. And now he's going to eat us. Ah! Quickly! Ah!
Let's hide there. Behind the mound. Maybe he won't notice. Well now, kittens. There's nowhere to run anymore. <gasps> I think he spotted us. I smell you. I smell you, my wonderful, delicious, sweet little kittens. A tiger cub. Mm, and a leopard cub. He found our trail. Leo! You need to think of something, and fast! Sig, this is... this is the Bogland Monster. This time we're finished. All right, kittens. I'm coming for you. I'm already here. What's going on? Where did you two go? Uh, I don't understand. I was following the trail. Uh, all right. You've outsmarted me. But next time, you won't manage to run away from me. <laughs> it worked! He left. He couldn't smell us. <laughs> Tig, thanks to the monster, the mud covered our smell. <laughs> Cuba! <laughs> yeah! Our missing boy is back. <laughs> and we thought you were the Bogland monster, not Cuba. <laughs> Listen, Cuba, you know, I'm sorry I was making fun of you. You might not have a sharp sense of smell. But I would never, ever think of hiding like that. <laughs> and this is Lily of the Valley, my favorite. Here, smell it. Amazing, right? Ew, Mappa, it smells like frogs. <laughs> You're right, that smells very weird. Very weird. It's because of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a muddy monster! I'm gonna save everyone! Tig, you're nothing like a monster. You're just a dirty little tiger cub. <laughs> yeah, one who smells like a frog. <laughs> I'm already fed up with this snow. Tig, it suits you. Spring is over, and it's still freezing. Uh-huh. I really miss all that sunshine, too. <laughs> and I miss the flowers. Come out, sunshine. Where did you go? <laughs> I'm sure it will come out just for you. There once was someone in the taiga who the sun listened to. <gasps> really? Tell us more, Mappa. Come along with me, kids. The Sun Folk. <laughs> Look at that! Awesome! Mappa, who are they? This is the Sun Folk. What kind of folk? Sun Folk. These animals lived in the taiga a long time ago. It is said that they descended from the sun itself. In cold times, when the sun used to stop giving warmth to the earth, they used to send the Chosen One the strongest and fastest one in their tribe, to talk to the forefather and ask him to turn up the heat. And the son listened to him. But Mapa Pandiga, how did they talk 
to the sun. It's so high up. There is a valley of geysers behind the quick river and the big swamp. And in the valley lies the magical sunstone. They used it to communicate. Mappa, where are these sun folks right now? Nobody knows. Some say they left these parts a long time ago. But others believe that the sun folk is still among us. They just forgot about where they came from. There, look. To me, this chosen one looks like Leo, don't you think? <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> He does! <laughs> <laughs> okay, kids. Let's get going. It's getting chilly. <laughs> Leo! Leo, stop sitting around. Come play tag with us. Tink, I still can't get the Sun Folk story out of my head. <laughs> Try to think on the run. It will warm you up a lot. Just listen for a sec. What if I, I mean, leopards are the Sun Folk? And I'm the chosen one. You, the chosen one? Why not? You said yourself that the one from the picture looks a lot like me. Well, he does. It means I have to go to the Valley of the Geysers and look for the Sunstone. Leo, it's very dangerous to go to the Valley. <laughs> Guys, come on, try to understand. If I am the chosen one, I have to talk to the sun. Otherwise, summer will never come. Whether you're the chosen one or not, this much, I know. We're not going to let you go alone. Yeah, Tink is right. We'll go with you. <laughs> no way. I'm not going to go in that water. Let me think. I'll come up with something. A raft? Wow, Cuba, you're a genius. Leo, what are you doing? Hop on the raft. You forget, Tig. I'm the chosen one. I have to find the sunstone by myself. I got this, guys. <laughs> we finally made it to the big swamp. I'm sure that this whole swamp is already frozen or something. Whoa! Maybe not. Leo, where are you going? I'm jumping over it. Leo, that's crazy. Come with us. It is safer together. Don't be afraid, guys. I'm the chosen one. I totally got this. Whew, if this so-called sunstone does not exist, you're giving me a piggy ride back. Uh, 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 Leo, uh, you might want to be careful. Uh, it's okay. I can do this. I am the chosen one. It's okay when you use teamwork and avoid taking unnecessary risks. Uh. Huh? Oh, Leo, oh. are you coming? Yeah. You guys taking a nap? Let's go. Oh. Oh. Okay. Now Leo will crawl up to his hunk of rock, say hello to the sun, and then we can go home. Hey, guys, what about the geysers? What about the geyser schmeisers? They won't stop us. Mama didn't say that they were hot. Sunstone! Found it! <sighs> Leo, wait for us! Huh? Ow! Uh, they're sin 
singeing my fur off! Ah, Leo, watch out! Jara, I'm the chosen one. I'll come up with something. You tried hard, but you see, there's no way to get through. Let's forget about the stone. Let's go home, okay? Uh, guys, you go. I'll catch up later. Chosen one. I got this. I can do this. I'm sorry, Leo, but it seems even the chosen one can't do it by himself. But together, we got this. Come on, push! <laughs> <laughs> Nicely, and the sunshine came out. By the time we came back, everything already bloomed. Nicely done. It has indeed become much warmer. It was Leo's idea. <laughs> he suggested we go to the Sunstone. Thank you, friends. Without your help, I just couldn't have done it myself. Ah, kids. As they say, the one without friends is like a tree without roots. And always remember this. Two heads are better than one. <laughs> 